Got to go Vol season two, episode two, here with a very special guest, La Liga specialist, SDS commentator, and Sky Sports commentator, Faisal. How are you I'm doing? I'm good, Faisal? man. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, man. I've been watching your content, and I know you recently started your YouTube, but TikTok, you're flying. So good to be on. Ah, oh, thank you so much for the for the like for being on. You you're a great guest. Your content's been amazing, and Real Madrid fan. I gotta respect that. And we're gonna start doing a question of the podcast at the start of the podcast here mm -hmm. at FC Wonder Kid. And I wanted to ask you, Faisal, because I saw Champions League accounts asking players who is Mr. Champions League. And let me ask you, Faisal, who is Mr. Champions League? That's only one, and that's only one person only, and that is the Don El Cristiano Ronaldo. I saw people talk about Messi. Listen, Messi might be the greatest of all time, but if we're talking mm. about Champions League and Champions League only, it has to be the Don. It has to be the Chris. Cristiano Ronaldo, best Champions League player ever, in my books too, and best player in the history of Real Madrid. Absolutely. Do you agree, Absolutely. Faisal? Absolutely. Some people say Di Stefano. And when I went to the museum to visit, I saw a lot of Di Stefano, which I understand, but I would like to see a bit more Cristiano because he deserves... That's respect. Absolutely. Keep going bold. And yeah, ask more questions. What questions would you like to see in future podcasts? But here's the first team. The first topic here with Faisal is the Champions League. It's fitting. So, Lille against Real Madrid. I, f I felt that the team was not collectively playing together. And there's a big name missing this season that Real Madrid are not used to. Tony Cross, do you agree with me? First? Absolutely, I think the midfield we still ha we're still trying to adapt, and and I think everyone's trying to adapt to each other. We've got Mbappe, who's still not being the same person. You like you watch mm -hmm. Madrid, he's not the same person. Yep. Mbappe with Madrid to Mbappe with PSG, there's so many issues with the system. But Tony Cruz is is the biggest and most important piece. I said it last year yep. when he retired. I said. His absence, rather than Mbappe signing, is going to hurt us a lot. And you're looking at it this season. He's massive. That's facts. That's facts. That's facts. Because Tony Kroos has that experience, that vision. And in the Real Madrid locker room, I don't know if you agree with me, Faisal, there's no player that can match the, the qualities that he has. He's, Jude Bellingham and Valverde try to do what Tony Kroos does on that pitch, but they still can't match that output. So what do you see with this Real Madrid team? What do you believe will change in one, two years' time? I do believe Real Madrid are Champions League contenders. Don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. A team that uh -huh. is unbeaten. 41 games in La Liga. They're always contenders. And all, obviously with this team, Vini, Mbappe, everybody knows the mm -hmm. roster. But what do you think is missing for Real Madrid to click with Mbappe? In this Just team? a system change. I think we, uh, we started with 4-3-3 and that's not the way forward. I think our best team mm -hmm. is the diamond formation, which is what worked very well last season. And once we change it mm -hmm. to the diamond formation uh, and we play Jude a bit more advanced and Kamavinga comes in and Fede plays on the right-hand side, Chemenia is a six, I think we're good. Mm -hmm. Mbappe just needs to understand movement and needs to understand where Vinicius goes because there's been so many games where both Vinny and Mbappe are on the left-hand side gotcha. themselves. Once we figure this out, I think we'll be good. So in those tactics, you believe that Rodrigo Goes is kind of left out. Unfortunately, I, I love him, but he has to be on the bench. I think our best team is the four midfielders plus Mbappe and Vinny. Mm, and Rodrigo coming off, coming the, off bench the bench against yeah. Hendrik too. Yeah, yeah. With Hendrik too in all this mix. Arda Gula. Arda Gula as well. Arda Gula as well. And Arda Gula too. And Brahim Diaz. Brahim, Brahim Diaz. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah. he was very important when Jude Bellingham got injured last season and Brahim stepped up. Interesting. Interesting. I, I kind of agree with what you said, but I do believe that the end product and the end plan is with three in midfield. I don't know if you, I don't know if you're going to agree with me, but the long-term plan of two, three years of Real Madrid. But currently, to play the best football, Real Madrid, I agree with what you said for midfielders to afford. But long-term plan, I believe that it's going to be Mbappe left wing with Vinicius Junior. Let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. I think it's like, that's the big thing. Like, who for you is the best player in that locker room? Especially when Vinicius Jr. wins the Ballon d'Or. I put Mbappe with the best player. Do you, do you agree with me, Faisal? When If everyone is playing on the best form. Yes. If, if everyone is playing on the best form, Mbappe is the best <laughs> player in the world. 
So there's no space on that left wing for Rodrigo, Vini and Mbappe. Decisions will have to be done. That's the big question. And with Champions League football, so in this sense, yes, I think it was a fluke. I don't think Real Madrid are going to have a bad Champions League campaign in this sense. But again, I felt Kroos was missed. And the leader of this team, since you're a Real Madrid fan, I wanted to ask you, who do you believe is the leader of Real Madrid currently with Carlo? At the Chalotti? moment, we've got Rudiger, who's been very vocal at the back line. Militao has been mm -hmm. very vocal. Jude Bellingham, he's only been here for now a year, but he's very vocal and it's helping the team. Don't forget, we've got Luka Modric still on the team. He's been doing True. it for a long, long time. Danny Cavajal, before now, his ACO injury. So uh, we've got a couple of leaders, but I think the most important thing is... As you mentioned, man, Tony Cruz being out, I think that's going to change things. You mentioned something interesting. You said um, Rodrigo on the left, Mbappe on the left, Vinny on the left. Mm -hmm. I don't think Rodrigo is going to be at Real Madrid for a long time. I think he will leave, so it's going to be some question marks. Where would be the best place? I think Bayern Munich would be an awesome City. fit for Rodrigo. C City, but will City like be tarnished their future with all these accusations? Like here in Portugal, there's a bit of news with these 115 uh, rules that they've breached and things like that. Like, do you think Rodrigo with no Guardiola? That's bold oh no, yeah, I agree. Like, if 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 nothing happens then he goes City. If something happened, as you said, the allegations, then I don't think he's going. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going. And Pep Guardiola. Personally, here in episode two, I'm going to say, I don't believe Pep Guardiola stays at Man City another year, especially if they get yes. accused what I believe they I should. Agree. Unfortunately, City. Like, and I believe all there's all interest to United wants it, Liverpool wants it, Arsenal wants Everyone it. Everyone wants it. So there's a lot of... Everybody wants <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, it was a uh, City did what they gotta do. They have a Champions League in their locker. They're gonna have five Premier League titles in a row. Let's see. There's no Rodri. Yeah, I, like I know we're in Champions League, but you you still put Man City favorite. Absolutely. In the Premier League without absolutely. Rodri. I mean, look what Kovacic is doing. Kovacic is now playing in a double pivot. Gondogan is back. They've got pieces. They've got pieces. It makes sense. It makes sense. Like, and I still put them. In that, in that position, but my big doubts from last season to this season, no, it's not Kevin De Bruyne at Man City. No, it's not Rodri since he's now injured. It's Phil Foden. Mm. It's Phil Foden. Like, I saw Sky Sports uh, in the Saturday, uh, Saturday morning socials. I was like, I saw start bench sell, and I saw Cole Palmer, Phil Foden, and Bukayo Saka. And I was there thinking, like, Phil Foden last season, he would be a start, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like, I know Cole Palmer was balling too. But you would say start Phil Foden. Mm -hmm. This season, I put star Cole Palmer. I put bench Bukayo Saka. And unfortunately, player, Premier League player of the year. But this season, Phil Foden, sell. And I think that is hard. It's for because... It, now it, fighting it's be for a Premier League and a champion. No, I agree. He hasn't started. And I think his Euro campaign wasn't the best as well. And I think... You mm -hmm. know, Pep. Pep is very... He loves to change things around. And if one person mm -hmm. sticks, he's going to go with it. I'm quite surprised Savio has been on the bench. He had a great start to the True. season. So Great game against Arsenal. Very like great Arsenal. game. Calafiori was like, whoa. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And after that game, <laughs> after that game, he hasn't started in the Premier League. So that's a bit weird. So let's see. That's well said. That's what, very well said, Faisal. So yes, Champions League, Real Madrid. We touched base a bit with Man City. Is there a team in the Champions League that's really impressed you and you've been like, look, I'm going to watch them play more? Like, There is two Mifika? teams. Uh, Aston Villa has been insane. Aston Villa. Aston Villa has done so well. They win against Bayern Munich and Durant. What a striker. Oh what days. a finish. Shout out to, to Martinez with a couple, couple <laughs> crucial <laughs> yeah, with couple crucial saves. But Aston Villa's the team. I'm looking at Benfica. Big win mm -hmm. against Atleti. Very happy. Shout out. Obrigado. Yeah. Obrigado, Look. Benfica. <laughs> that was the biggest win by a Portuguese team against a Spanish team in Champions League Ooh. history. 4 0. Like, and uh, Simeone was. Uh, like, was in the yeah. mud. Like, because if you say to Befica fans, like, did Trubin suffer a, a shot on target that you were, like, scared? Befica fans would say no. Yeah. No, nothing happened in that sense. So, that's mad. It was absolutely mad. But Aston Villa, you touched base with Aston Villa. And I, 
It's going to be a bold question. It's going to be a bold <laughs> question, Faisal. Okay, I'm, I'm already like, I'm going to prep. And the listeners at home, like, comment down below your answer for this. Like, because Aston Villa is making history now with Unai Emery. Beating Bayern Munich and Villa Park. Being a top four team or a, a team in the contention for the top four in the Premier League. I'm starting to be a guy that maybe says Unai Emery is a better manager than Mikel Arteta. Four years Mikel Arteta is not winning a, a title. Are we getting to that point, Faisal? Is Arteta going to win a Premier League with Arsenal? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I told you it's I bold. agree with I what you're saying. You I've said it for a while as well. If Arteta does not win the Premier League this season, we are having uncomfortable conversations about him. You're right. Fact. I agree. But Is right he even now, the best Spanish, the second best Spanish manager behind Guardiola. Mm. I, I don't know. Luis de la Fuente now going bold with Spain. Lock Petegui, no. Shambol. Xabi Alonso. Xabi <laughs> Alonso. That's the, <laughs> that's the one I was going to hint. Like, that's the question. That's the question. Like, when is Arteta enough? Is enough is enough? Because we know. Troops knows. Like, I remember being a kid watching YouTube. Before we had FC Wonder Kid, Faisal, SDS, these, these channels. I remember seeing Troops say, Finger out! Finger out! Arsenal fans switch up fast! Mm -hmm. And Arteta, I agree with you. If he doesn't win the Prem, like, people are going to start making question marks. But we kind of understand that he doesn't have a striker, though, Faisal. He doesn't have a striker, though. And also, And in the Champions And also, League, context, the last two years, he's been very, very close to winning it. So, True. let's see. I mean, I mean, I, I right. If you if he doesn't win it this year, we are we need to have some conversations about him. And the truth is, Arne Slot just arrived. Arne Slot made Ryan Garvenberch a better player. Konate a better player. Luis Diaz a better player. In ten games, nine wins. Like Arne Slot is making an immediate impact. And arguably, you can say Arne Slot until now, until now, is doing a better job than Mikel Arteta. <laughs> arguably, arguably, okay? I know it's really soon, but, like, Arsenal fans should, must be triggered if they see Liverpool winning the Premier League if it happens this season, and they're like, look, we're, we're third now? We, we're third now? Like, all of a sudden, City second, Arsenal third, Liverpool back in first? Mm. Like, look, that's why, that's why the Premier League just puts me so hyped, mm, so yeah. hyped in this sense, and, and Champions League, like, it, it could happen. Man City or Arsenal or Liverpool, each one of them like wins a title like a Premier League, an FA Cup, and a Champions League. It's crazy. But yeah. I, I don't, I, I, but, but I, I'm not, I'm not feeling that way. I'm not feeling that no, way. I and, think and, and um, I'm gonna hint. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm not I, feeling it. I think the Champions League format this year is very interesting because look at the top mm. eight. You've got Aston Villa, Benfica, Brest. Like in League R, True. it's in top. So the, the, the Champions League format is very interesting at the moment. And don't forget Sporting as well. Because it's before True. before the start of the Champions League, I, I did my I did my predictions on my channel. And I had Sporting to, to be the dark horse and finishing in the semis. So let's see. You got a you got good taste, mate. Because <laughs> Ruben Emery has been four years cooking this team with Sporting. And yes, they, they, did, they did draw to a PSV team that only wins two. In yep. the league, it's a top PSV team that just like Sporting, just like Bayer Leverkusen, and just like PSV, their best players didn't leave. And their coaches remain Peter Bosch, Ruben Emery, Xabi Alonso. So these three teams, for me, are the dark horses of the Champions League. And the PSV best striker as well. And, uh, and, yeah, true. And Luke De Jong, Bonnie Face, and Victor Jokeric. Mm -hmm. There's two Victors yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in all this. There's two Victors. Yeah. Because, yes, there's a lot of attention on Victor Jokeric. Understandably, best player in the Portuguese league since he's arrived. But Victor Bonnie Face, too, at Bayer Leverkusen, like, that's a proper striker that could leap for 60 to 80 million. Mm -hmm. And he, he's obviously convinced by staying because of Xabi Alonso, too. Like, yeah. Remaining on the last thing on Champions League that I want to ask you, so on this sense, how far do you believe like Bayer Leverkusen will go? Because a lot of attention goes to Bayern Munich, but Leverkusen are a tough team to beat, and Feyenoord felt it at the start. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think I think they've been fortunate with the schedule. I think the schedule has been they haven't they've yet to face a Milan. Yes, they they True. beat Milan, but Milan has been struggling in in Serie A this season and last mm -hmm. season. I think the next game is against Brest. 
again, not still a big, big challenge. Once I, I want to see them against Liverpool. Huh? They'll play Xabi Alonso and Bayer Leverkusen on the 5th of November. They're playing Liverpool at our That's the challenge. That's the challenge which I want to see. Because at the moment, we've only seen Xabi Alonso over the past 12 months against Bayern Munich. That's the biggest challenge. They could win. Huh? Imagine Florian Wirtz, Boniface, Grimaldo, Shaka. Like, that's the redemption yes. arc of Shaka. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, Shaka is like, now, look, I'm a top midfielder in the world of football. Like, yes. Arsenal fans, they were saying this, that, and the other thing. For me, one of the big reasons that Arsenal don't go that next level against the City, they've signed Calafiori that is like a duplicate almost of Josh Cogvardiol. A bit worse, in my opinion. <laughs> but Partey, he ain't no duplicate. He, he ain't even close. But one person they have to be next to that is Julian Timber. Timber is special. Mm. He's good. I think Saliba, uh, look, special. F uh, I like Timber, but he's injury prone. He's injury prone. That for me is the... And Calafiore even too. He had an ACL yes. back in the day with Basel. So, but but I, I agree. Julian Timber is special. And I think even for the marketing sense and the style of play, get Quinton Timber, his brother. I think he's been be, good. Be a, he's been good. A, a good midfielder to add. He wouldn't be too expensive. And he, the, the the culture of the team, he would embrace Absolutely. It. But totally. in, terms of, in terms of the best defense before we finish the Champions League, the best defense, in my mm -hmm. opinion, is Arsenal. I think that back line is the best defense of any team in, in the Champions League. Gabriel and Saliba, yeah, best duo of center backs. Califiori is on when, form. And but when Real Madrid comes back, Rudiger, Eder Militão, or Rudiger Alaba. Hey. I think they take the tour. Uh, no Alaba, no Alaba, no, no Alaba, no Alaba. <laughs> and then really and tell, tell, and then yeah. really tell, so. <laughs> got you, got you. Interesting enough. Interesting enough, I can ask you, so, on Real Madrid, last thing. So, if you had to pick a centre-back, I see a lot of centre-backs in the news now for January transfer window on Real Madrid. If you had to pick one centre-back for Real Madrid, realistic transfers that are being talked, Castelo Luqueba, Jorel Hatu, and Vitor Reis, wonder kid of Palmeiras, who would you pick personally? Realistically, out of the three, Lukeba. He's he's played Champions League. I've seen more of him. He's had more experience. Vitor Reis, uh, won the kid, but his release close is hundred million. That's not gonna happen. True. Uh, the other Hato, I haven't. I'll be honest. I haven't seen. I know he's he's I the like captain it. of Ajax. Captain at a young age. Um, he captain True. exactly. I know he's not what he's done, but in terms of Lukeba, I think I look at him and I, I say we have to get him. Mm, it's a great move it's a great move and i remember back in the day and, and it came out like recently that zidane was, wanted saliba yeah. zidane 2019 wanted saliba. 2019 <laughs> so back in the day he wanted mbappe too for those tryouts so zidane has an eye for talent and he knows what is being a real madrid player at the highest level and I, I know I'm saying that we're going to leave the Champions League but I, since you're a Real Madrid fan I just have so many questions Absolutely. I want to do like Carlo Ancelotti I believe he's a Don top five manager in the history of football I, I he's one of my favorite managers ever in football and he's made something that Mourinho's having difficulties that Carlo Ancelotti won Champions League at the beginning of this century and he's won it recently too so he's adapted to the modern day football but he doesn't, he's not going to be forever at Real Madrid. Who would be your choice for the next manager of Real Madrid? Xabi Alonso. After Don Carlo and Chelsea. Xabi Alonso. <laughs> Xabi Alonso. <laughs> Give me Xabi Alonso. Give me Xabi Alonso. However, no one. Raul. Could Raul be there in that choice? Huh? Raul, Raul yeah. No, no, no. Ra no, 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 no. With all due respect to Raul, <laughs> no, 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 no. His, his vibes, no? Yeah. His record with the, with the Castilla team is not the best. N no. But mm -hmm. if you had, if you had to ask me two managers, Chabi Alonso is the top of my list. Another person, I don't see it happening. It's not realistic. But if we somehow do it, it will be amazing. Bring Jurgen Klopp out of retirement, because rock star football. Jurgen Klopp with the midfield we have and the pressing and everything. Please, please. And Mbappe rumoredly was going to go to Liverpool. Rumoredly. They were they were they were fine with selling him PSG to Liverpool. I don't know. And there was a bit of He wanted about Jude that. Bellingham and at the same time Fede Valverde as the perfect club <sighs> midfielder. So that that worked. True mate. 
That is facts. But it's not going to happen. Pede Valverde is the per perfect club midfielder. It's, that's facts. I, I, that's one of the most factual things I've ever heard in terms of similarities to the style of play and to what football per uh, football player brings onto the pitch. Absolutely love that take. But yes, Champions League football, that was a bold topic. Let us know in the comment section who are the teams to watch in the Champions League. And this is a, 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 a related topic. It's... Who, for me and Faisal, are the top five teams in football currently? And look, I'm going to start by saying I'm going to put in my top five teams in football, mandatory, Man City has to be there. Mandatory, Bayern Munich has to be there. Mandatory. <laughs> He's like, when, when am I going to hear this team? I'm going to disagree. Real Madrid has to be there. And mandatory, Liverpool and Barcelona have to be there. I don't put Arsenal in the top five teams in football currently. Are, we, are, you, with me, are you basing this on this season and this season only? I'm basing this season and the expectations I have for the teams. I think Barcelona this season will have a much better season than Arsenal at the end of the game. At the end of the season, I'm sorry. Okay. Hansi Flick's making oh, absolutely. magic for me, Absolutely. Man. Like, I'm shook. I'm sure I look I was like I was a Xavi supporter to an extent like I was saying Xavi supports La Masia Xavi trusts the, trusts the future but it got to a stage that it got a bit toxic you know what I mean it's like he felt like he was in this in this chair like he won La Liga and that's it he, he was like I'm the I'm the supreme mm -hmm. guy and Laporta must have felt like no 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 there's managers that want the Barcelona seat and Hansi Flick I think it's his dream and he's shushing me up because he trusts La Masia. He plays a style of play that is extremely attractive. And honestly, La Mina Mal is a better player. Uh, Pedri is looking like one of the best midfielders in the world of football. And he just came out of injury. Le I'm hyped for what's going to happen with Gavi. Lewagowski. Lewagowski is going goals. It, mate, Levin, like, yeah. Lewandowski is having his best season in until now this season. Rafinha, yeah. yeah, but I think with Rafinha is a bit of consequence too of Laminha Mal. And Laminha Mal, when he visualizes him, himself with a Ballon d'Or Faisal, <laughs> he's visualizing <laughs> it with a Barca, intent of being the best player in the world at Barca. And that's special for me. And Rafinha, if he wants to stay in that ball game, he has to match. Oh, he has to oh. match or equal some of these things in goals and assists, but definitely in terms of importance, he's got a match. So, how are you feeling with all this? Because Lewandowski, 12 goals in 11 games in two assists. No, I'm scared. Patrick uh, in the first Honestly, half. I'm scared. Like, like, my channel is all La Liga and I've done reviews. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, very scared of what they've done. And, bro, 11, 11 wins out of... Um, um, no, 11 wins out of 12. They've been convincing. Mm -hmm. They've won well. They've, they've, they beat Alavis today 3-0. They beat Villarreal 5-1. Girona. They've been very convincing. Your list, though, is quite interesting because if we were going to base it on this season and this season only, let me give mm -hmm. you my first bold take of the podcast. <laughs> and some oh, people might, might kill me. I wouldn't have Real Madrid in top five. Mm, in the top five teams in football. This season. You're playing right now, I understand that. Without cost. This season, we're that. not being a top five team. This season we're not. I think Barcelona is better than us. City is better than us. I'll even put Arsenal better than us. This season again, I'm 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 basing it on this season. Oof. You said you said expectations. I agree. Our expectations much higher. But mm -hmm. in the, in this season, Liverpool has been better than us. So I I wouldn't put Madrid. I think we are one of the most boring team to watch this season. I I, I kind of agree with your statement there. Because it, when you watched Real Madrid last season, there was a chance on goal every second. Every second, or at least there yeah. was an aura that that was going to happen. And I have the chance to... I got this jersey back in, uh, back in Madrid, and it was a Real Madrid-Girona day at home oh, in La Liga. that was a back good in game. February. Mate, Vini, out of nowhere. Like, you felt that all of a sudden... Real Madrid, they're going to make business happen. Like, away too at the start of the season, Real Madrid did what you said. But I think it's a, it's a tick away, uh, yeah. Basil. I think it's a tick away. And with what I see with Real Madrid and what I see with Arsenal, 
Personally, I know you're a Real Madrid fan, but I would be more worried as an Arsenal fan than Real Madrid. Because I, I, I really, I see Carlo Ancelotti, two losses in 2024. And I see at Arsenal, and I look, there's no Rodri now at Man City. Ma Man City. Saliba's no more injured. Declan Rice, it's time now. Martin Odegaard, when is he going to come back? I would be more worried. And that's why in my power ranking, I exclude Arsenal. But yes, I'd have Man City ahead, Bayern ahead, Liverpool ahead, Leverkusen ahead. And bold statement because they're going to play together. They're going to play each other. Sporting. <laughs> <laughs> ahead of Arsenal. You've oh, no, no, I agree. Sporting done very well. <laughs> but Ruben Emery, bold take on my end. So because you went bold, Faisal. Ruben Emery, in two to three years' time, you'll remember this take. He will be perceived as a better manager than Mikel Arteta. Maybe. It's very bold. It's very, and I don't know where he's going next after Sporting, but I can tell you, mate, he's going to make something do you think, special. Do you think this is his time. final season at Sporting? Uh, I would like to think no. I would like to think no, but I think it is because I think he's going to win the title. Portugal in Portugal, Benfica, Brunelage, they're playing great football. Porto, Samu, like yeah. Chelsea fans were like, yeah. well, are we going to sign Samu? Yeah, are we yeah. going to not? Like, good on Porto for signing Samu for 50 million with a 50% release, 50% of the future yeah. fee going back. Like, for me, Atletico looks stupid. Very getting Sarlov, getting Julian Alvarez. <laughs> Let it go with Samu, a physical beast. Like, with the finishing, he can score with a header. He can score with his right foot. He can score with his left foot. He's the future of Spain. I look now in the next three years at Spain, and there's a possibility it's Nico, Samu, and Lamine. I agree. Like, I agree. Look, I, so, and... Uh, yeah. No, no, I agree. I predict the World Cup 2030, which is, ironically enough, going to take place in Spain, is going to be Nico, Samu, and Lamine. Samu is going to be the future. Uh, I tweeted about him. I tweeted about him mm. in 2022. I said, watch out, <laughs> watch out for Samu. And, and like, that's the thing with like you being a Real Madrid fan. I, I don't know. You, I don't know if you're going to agree with the statement because here in the FC Wonder Kid podcast, we want people to finish the podcast and have more culture than they had before. And I think this is a statement that is factual. And I want your thoughts since you're a Real Madrid fan with this, that it's, a strong Spanish national team means a strong Barcelona team. Is this factual, Faisal? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Look, I, that's the thing. Like, for me, I, that, and going back to Hansi Flick and all this, I look at Marc Casado, I look at Hector Ford, I look at Pau Cubarsi, I look obviously at Lamin Yamal, Alejandro Barde, Gil Fernandez Bernal. is even Bernal getting Bernal as well, about. before the ACL. Be oh, me, Marc Bernal, one of, such an unfortunate yeah. injury. Like, this is real what's happening. Spain are going to be a powerhouse in the next 10 to 15 years in football. Me as a Portuguese man, I want to see one day Portugal win the World Cup. It's a dream. We've never done it. 2026, was Ronaldo's final dance. <laughs> <laughs> Portugal winning it. Oh, that would be that would be absolutely insane. And yes, this is the best bridge possible. We're going to talk here about international football here in this podcast. Because it's going to be a long week. I, like, And it's good for Guard Pep Guardiola to give a break. He even stated he, he likes international break yeah. because Sir Alex Ferguson used to give a break to all his players and who is he in his eyes to judge what Sir Alex Ferguson does and he follows in the best exactly. footsteps. So, and you're an international break. How are you feeling with all this? Because we have a Victor Gokeres with Sweden. We have uh, Vinicius Juniores, Brazil. Like Brazil is in the mud personally. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I don't think uh, Brazil has been convincing and even even with Vinicius I think uh, uh, Vinicius only criticism in his career is he's not stepping up with Brazil but this gives mm -hmm. a chance now to put Rodrigo on the left hand side and you know when True. Rodrigo goes on the left that's not a lot of better players than him like for me Vinicius Junior is the best left wing in the world for me Rodrigo is the second best left wing in the world that's a bold take Ooh. you can argue you can you can Disagree, agree. For me, Rodrigo is the second best left winger in the world. And would you say Lamine Yamal is the best right winger in yeah. the world of football? Yeah. And second, would you put Michael Olise or a Salah? This season, uh, uh, Mohamed Salah. 
Mm. But I think Olise, he's getting close. <sighs> he's to getting that. close. He's getting close he's to getting that. Close. And I'm pretty surprised. Like, I'm not going to. Crystal Palace is a top team playing in Premier League football. Oliver Glasner. Like, when they started a tick last season, that was great football to watch. Adam Morton, also an awesome player. But, like, Crystal Palace don't look the same. And understandably so without Olise. And now you see Bayern. The vibes that Jamal Musiala, Michael Olise are giving. Honestly, I'm thinking that here, company is a manager to stay too. Mm. And it's all because I believe Michael Olise is a big hand on that. And Joshua Kimmich. Yep. You know, I'm um, I'm Portuguese. I like Polina, but Pavlovich and Joshua Kimmich is a double pivot that I'm not going to be pointing fingers. I'm not much more, be, much more better I'm technical. Not be po- exactly. Ball retention wise, possession as Bayern Munich should play. They're always the A side with in. whoever they yep. play. Exactly. I I think the Joshua Kimmich and Pavlovich duo that would be and and there was news of Joshua Kimmich. Interesting, going interested in going to Barcelona. Interesting in but going to Barcelona. Against the big team, they do need a Palinia. Aston Villa, they needed a Palinia that midfield. True, true, and I, I, I agree. And now with Onana injured, like Douglas Luiz, mm-hmm. I think was more consistent in that sense. And that for me was like one of the moments that Arsenal didn't go for the move when they oh, should have. Yeah. Like in that deadline day, Douglas Luiz move. That was insane. I was like, this is the move. This is the party. doesn't give you security. Yeah. Oh, I, that's the what ifs, yes. right? The what ifs of football. <laughs> <laughs> the what ifs. But wanted to ask you, so in the inter- international break sense, you said Portugal contenders in 2026. I love hearing that. How are you feeling with the Portuguese national team starting Cristiano Ronaldo in a lot of the games? Personally, with Sal Hems is injured, Diogo Jota is called up, but he's not a pure striker. So I'm of the camp that Cristiano Ronaldo should start. I, I fully agree. I watch I watch Saudi League a lot, and he's bro. He's 39 years old, but he's still as quick as ever. He's still as mobile as mm-hmm. ever, and he's still as hungry. He's very hungry, very committed. He wants to score a thousand goal. He's on 905 he goals. He can do. It. You know, I think the perfect will. fairy tale. His hundred, his, I mean, thousand, sorry, his thousand goal <laughs> will be in the World Cup final in the States. And after that happens, he's going to, like, press conference. Guys, I've in retired. Miami That's against it. Messi. Oh. <laughs> in Argentina. In a final. <laughs> the ultimate dream of a Real Madrid fan. No, it's also my dream. Personally, it's also my dream. But, but, I, but let me I ask you know, this. What's, what's your fools? Because I haven't been a fan of it. What's your fools of Martinez as the Portuguese manager? I think Roberto Martinez has to manage one of the most talented group of players we've ever had. This generation of Portugal is one of the most talented generations we have. And there's a boogeyman. I'm not going to lie. There is a boogeyman in the Portugal national team manager position. It's José Mourinho. It's José Mourinho. And when... He got sacked. A lot of people were like, is it, is it now? Is it going to happen now? Because in the past, and you know better than a lot of people, Faisal, it's Mourinho wanted yes. Portugal national yes. team when he was at Real yes. Madrid. He was like, look, I can do both. You know, I'm, 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 I'm that guy. I'm the special one. Remember? But Florentino was like, no, but we're the best team in the world. We're also special. Yeah. So I understand both. I understand both positions. Okay. Florentino's and Mourinho's. But... That's, you asked me what I think about Roberto Martinez. I think, yes, some players can get their best qualities with Roberto Martinez, but I'm a skeptical that we're going to win a, a, a World Cup, a Euros with Roberto Martinez because of substitutes, because of players that I was surprised to see Cristiano Ronaldo not play with Morocco, at least coming as early as he did in that personal match. And there's others too, like with France... The substitutes. It made no sense. There's moments that the style it of made play. No sense. Exactly. It was frustrating. It was frustrating. And, and your biggest so, problem, and, what, I've, what I've realized is that the best players in the Premier League, Bernardo Silva, Ruben Diaz, mm-hmm. they never step up for Portugal as well. That's your biggest problem. Bernard Silva is a big question mark I have. Because, yes, Bernard Silva, his legacy will be remembered as one of the best player, Portuguese players in the Premier League. For, for sure, okay, next to a Bruno, next to Ronaldo, obviously. Bernard will be in that conversation. Nani, you can arguably mm-hmm. say Bernardo has a bigger legacy oh, than Nani. Easy. That easy. was insane, insane. But in the national team, yeah, we, we feel that... 
that uh, not not in, not hung, not the same hunger type thing, you know, on the pitch. Not the tracking back. There's there's a different player, mm -hmm. understandably, understandably. But with Roberto Martinez, last thing, and it came to my mind now. It's what I really got mad with Roberto Martinez in the Euros was Ronaldo starting against Georgia. That was the moment I was like, okay, this is not good man management. If 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 I'm a player. The game, we got six points in the, in, in the, like, we know we're going to go through in first. Ronaldo shouldn't start that game. Ronaldo should never start that game. And we all know he started because he said, look, I'm the guy. I want to start. I'm going to score a goal in the Euros. I'm going to be the best. I'm the, no, I am the best goal scorer in the history of football. I play if I want to play and I can't play. So I wouldn't have started him in that game. I agree. Personally. Like, and that for me showed that Roberto Martinez, to an extent, that man, uh, that man management was put in case. Like, but yeah, my favorite manager ever in Portugal is Scolari. Like, Scolari, like, he united the nation. And for then, Sanch won us the Euros, true. But the way that Scolari, like, just, he was the father of Ronaldo in a mm. sense, you know? Like, mm. Ronaldo needed that, that shoulder, you know? That shoulder yeah, pad yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. you're the captain now. And at that time, you had Ricardo Carvalho, you had Costinha, like, you had players, Deku, Deku, Deku the, Ricardo yeah, Carvalho. Yeah. They were like, we're going to be captain. Mm -hmm. But Scolari was like, no, no, no. <laughs> captain is this guy, Cristiano Ronaldo. So that's why I'll, I'll always have a, a special bias, let's say, for Scolari in the sense with the Portuguese national team. But interesting question. And how are your thoughts, like, Faisal, like seeing this Juve team with Tiago Mota and sticking with Portugal? Francisco Conceição. Is Francisco Conceição talked a lot about in England? Because here in Portugal... He was the son, he's the son of Sergio Conceição, former Porto manager. He is a big star here. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on Francisco? And what's the perspective in England? No, it's, it's very interesting at the moment of what's going on. I I personally think, so sorry sorry to maybe change topic, just go back to the, to the no, cause it was a very good topic, the Portugal topic. My biggest problem with Portugal is Liao. Liao mm. needs to step up. He really, when it comes to talent, I think his talent ability speaks for itself. My, my One thing that pisses me off about Leal, showcase mm -hmm. it. Where's the consistency? I see glimpses. I don't see the full consistency. And when you see Milan, you see Teo Hernandez, Rafael Leon. That's arguably one of the best left sides in club level. And then when you look at the national team, Nuno Mendes and Rafael Leon, you have those same expectations because, yes, Nuno Mendes is one of the best <laughs> left backs in the world of football. <laughs> God is to say that. But Rafael Leon, there's a lot of moments. And justifying, I think, uh, for the people that don't watch Portugal and should, at least extended highlights, Ronaldo is not here forever. <laughs> uh, it's... He attacks the space a lot of times on his own. And that, for me, for a top winger, you cannot attack the space against a French national team on your own. Against a Croatia that is a highly organized team on your own. And he needs to be more of a team player. Mm -hmm. That's the feeling I get with Rafael Leon. It's not what he does one-on-one. -on -one, and he does amazing runs. But it's what the amazing runs lead to with Rafael Leon. And sometimes he needs to understand that it can lead to him losing the ball. And if he does lose the ball, he needs a teammate next to him to come back and get it. And that's what a Guardiola would teach, what a Xabi Alonso, Xabi Alonso would teach, what an Ancelotti yes. te teaches yes. to a Rodrigo. Never defending on his own or going to attack in his space on his own. And Rafael Leon does that a lot, a lot. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not Ancelotti, I'm not a, <laughs> but this is just a personal thing that I, say with, I see with Leon. The person he irritates me so yeah. much. And I arguably going to say, like, in terms of decision making on ball, when to attack the space, when to keep the ball, when to it's pass cool. the ball, when to cross, Lamine Yamal is better right now. It's oh, 17. Yes. yes. That Rafael no doubt. That Rafael Leon. So, and in terms of one on one talent and dribble, I can say Rafael Leon is as talented, but the decision making is the I agree. of being a top player. World-class player, generational player. Haaland's decision-making in terms of positioning. Lamine Yamal's decision-making in terms of being a top winger. This is what Rafael Leon has to get to. I fully and agree. I have that belief, mate. I have that belief because he can, potentially Rafael Leon can be the best player of our national team. And I could have said that for Jean Felix in the past. But that will not be the case, I believe, in three, 
to five years' time. Have you heard of a player named Khudrig Marafi? Khudrigo Mora. They're in a in Eng- Porto player, Porto kid. I know I get a bit of stick here because I've got a Portuguese podcast here, the pre-bet show with Betano. Uh, it's weekly, and I've been publicly saying in the last three weeks that Khudrig Mora, Porto wonder kid, 17-year-old, he's going to the national team very soon in the next one, two years. And he gonna be, he's going to be talked about as one of the top maestros in football. Like Arda Guler mm. for Turkey. So I'm, and I'm putting it on tape with you. Because I really believe this is going to happen. Because, yeah, people will look back and say, Ah, <laughs> he said that with Faisal. <laughs> That's oh, good. But with yeah, Rodrigo Mora. Say so. We mentioned that. Rodrigo Mora. Uh, international break to this. We have a lot of listeners for the U- from the U.S. Uh, you follow Premier League all your life. Of course. Uh, what are you thinking here with Pochettino with the U.S.? Oh, very interesting. I think I think it was the best decision for them. I think the U.S. have so much talent. They just need a manager. And I think Pochettino is a... F- mm, what? Do they, though? Huh? Do they have more talent than Turkey? Kokshu, Kenan Yildiz. Like, for me, the U.S. is like... I, I don't know the expectations that I have about them. Yes, they're a better national team than Mexico right now. Yes, the U.S. are a better national team than maybe the U.S. on paper. But when I look to the Colombia, to Ecuador, with a Kendry Paez, a Caicedo, a Hinka Pie, I don't know. I don't know if I'm so bullish thinking about them, Faisal. <laughs> Kristen Pulisic, will, will he be remembered as the best American football player ever? Or soccer player for the American fans? Like that's the, the real not, talent. The, the, the thing is, I'm not even. To get that. I'm not even looking at the Le, the LeBron James of soccer in Christian Pulisic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking at one person, at, which I think once he realizes how good he is, Reyna. For mm-hmm. me, I rate Reyna very, very highly. He just needs the right manager, and Pochettino being a very attacking-minded manager, and he knows where things are. I think it's a good fit. I do think it's a good fit. And the right club, mate. The right club. I'm like with Reina, I'm a bit uh, yeah. like why is he at Forest? Why does he come back to Dortmund and doesn't play? I don't get it. Like I'm a bit like Gio Reina needs a top agent. Yes. Like I don't know, maybe it's George Mins already, and I'm here saying things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but Gio Reina for me, Eredivis, it's just a match in heaven for Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Like Malik Tillman now at PSV, an American that what a season he had, bought now for twelve million off Bayern. I'm thinking Ricardo Pepe too. He he's playing great mm-hmm. too at PSV. Sergino Dest. Why Balogun, Balogun is having uh, ba- Monaco. True, man. But he, he he yeah true true. Balogun was a that's a great snatch by Very him. good. Like England could have could have selected. And yeah, now last one with the international break. It's just England, yeah, because. What are you thinking here? Is Cole Palmer going to start for England, mate? Because I'm starting to get to the point that it's disrespectful that this man doesn't start when it, even in the final. He comes on, he makes the difference. Cole Palmer makes the team better automatically when he plays. Will he play left back? I saw oh, some Oh, yeah, I saw, I saw that. That's mad. I saw that. I saw that. How are you going to make the best Cole Palmer if he's playing at left back? I think the, <laughs> the best version for England... Kopama has to start, but I look at it and I and I, and I say, if Kopama starts as a ten, that means Jude Bellingham can't start as a ten. That means mm-hmm. okay, put Kopama on the right hand side, but then against Bukayo Saka is the best per- fit for England on the right hand side. I really think Kopama. I think it should be Kopama mm. on the left hand side. I think he can still gotcha. adapt. I don't know why. Foden started on the left the whole Euros and that Mm. affected England. Harry Kane, by the way, Harry Kane, the next campaign is going to be his final campaign. I'm sick and tired. Harry Kane, so World Cup is his last big international. The last hooray. And who's next? Solanke, 75 million. (laughs) A player that I consider worse than Vitor (laughs) Jokic. Look, I'm I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm going to be honest with you. I. I was surprised that Harry Kane made the career decision of going to Bayern Munich. I was also surprised that Bayern Munich didn't win the league. And the circumstances were that he was facing one of the 
He's facing one of the generational managers in the next 10, 20 years with Xabi Alonso that goes unbeaten in the league. The circumstances were unpredictable. So I'm not going to hate on that. And he scored a ton of goals <laughs> Bayern Mun uh, with Bayern Munich. But Harry Kane right now, for England, for Bayern Munich, he has to get a trophy. Like, his legacy will be absolutely tarnished if he doesn't get a trophy. And he personally knows it. Because by going to Bayern Munich, he's signing the contract of, I have to win even a DFB Poco, mate. Like, <laughs> if I don't win something, <laughs> these people are going to be hunting me forever. Yeah, you're right. Trophyless this. Like, we see how Tottenham fans react in the internet. They can't even speak when trophy comes. Harry Kane doesn't want to be in that conversation, too. So... Uh, I I don't know if he'll get to that stage because he could he could go to the next Euros. He could go because we've seen players with that age managing to stay still play at a high level. I'm not saying he's Robert Lewandowski. For me, Robert Lewandowski is the best striker in the next 10 years, not counting Luis Suarez. Karim Benzema. Me, do, you, do you agree? Do you put Karim Benzema? See, that's... Benzema's above Lewa. I put Leva ahead because he breaks the Gerd Muller um, tr uh, track with in the Bundesliga, most goals scored in one season. He's the top goal scorer in the Champions League, only behind. That's because of Messi that's because Benzema decided Ronaldo. to go Saudi two years ago. No, 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 no. no. Do you really believe so? Benzema is better than Lewandowski. And honestly, he did win a Ballon d'Or, and Lewandowski was robbed one. With all due respect, <laughs> I love Liwa. No, 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 I, I don't love Liwa. I respect Liwa. I respect Liwa. It's not. A, it's gotcha. not close. It's not close. Uh, it, so if you put like a start bench cell with a Luis Suarez, Lewandowski, and a Karim Benzema, I I I would personally start the Luis Suarez. I would bench Lewandowski and I would sell Benzema. So you would go Lucito, Karim, Liwa. However, however, Let us know what do you start? Who do you start benching? Soul? However, I don't know, mate. Levin however, Levin if we're doing, okay, let me ask you this: the best prime of each three or three start sub sell. I would, yeah, I, best. I would still do the three. For me, the best prime. I would still do the three. The best peak. Karim Luis Leo. Eh, because he was the best player on his team. Is that the argument? Lewandowski he was the best was player also. in the world. Has has Suarez ever had a a a? Um... See, Suarez was the best striker in the world years on end with Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. I think that's the circumstance too, which the competition is a bit weaker against. Karim no Benzema. one is ha no one is having the campaign that Benzema had in two thousand and one, two thousand and three. No one. No, no one. that was insane. That was no insane. One. Like, but. You need to see the team and also... No, no, I, like, no, no, no. I'm joking. This is me biased. This is just bias. This is just bias. <laughs> this is just bias. <laughs> but one thing, like going on the Real Madrid type bias in that sense, and I, I, I think there's a lot of disrespect in the internet. I put Toni Kroos in the best midfielder oh, I've ever sure. seen in terms for of sure. pass accuracy, efficiency for sure. in football. For sure. Like in football. And the way he retires... It's like I'm still the guy. Tony and I'm fine. And fun fact, theory. I don't know if you know. The most bull um no, the most progressive passes. Pass the most progressive oh. passes into the final third since 2013 in the Champions League. It's not Messi, it's not Iniesta, it's not Xavi, it's Tony Cruz. <laughs> Ooh, cold. Cold Tony Cruz. Was... And now we look at Real and think. God, we were so lucky to watch Sonny Cruz play football. Absolutely. Word we? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Here, is there any uh, last thoughts here at the podcast, uh, Faisal, that you want to do? A player that you want to say to the listeners? This is a player that you got to watch. A team uh, that you really want to shout out that is a must watch. Here on my end, Bias, Sporting, and Vitória de Guimarães. Vitória is going to have a strong conference league. Mm -hmm. We're going to get another Champions League position because portugal doesn't have the privilege of getting four <laughs> spots in the champions okay. league so we have to fight one to the third slot and i believe we're gonna one person it. for everyone to watch out he hasn't still started for his team which i don't understand why he's from my country he plays for como fabregas for some reason hasn't started him but if he starts him he's the best player 
His name is Ali Ali Jassim. He is a star. Him and Nico Pass for Como is going to be the two big thing. Love it. Como must watch football, okay? I, I love Nico that. Nico Pass is beautiful. Because, yes, the manager. Yeah. And Varan, come on. How could you do that? We wanted to yes. see you. <laughs> <laughs> the fairy tale ending in Como, in the lake Absolutely. Como. But yeah, some things weren't meant to happen. And yeah, Varan, look, still a legend of this game. Real Madrid, like when Mourinho got him. I remember, like, everybody was like, Varan, Varan from La. What? <laughs> <laughs> and it went Amazing. quite well. Thank you so much, Faisal, for, for participating here Absolutely. in the FC Anytime. Western Kid Podcast. Episodes, episode two. Mate, I love doing this. You are so bold. La Liga specialist. Go subscribe to Faisal's channel. The link is going to be in the description. And yes, thank you so much, Faisal, for going bold. My, my pleasure. And thank you for coming yes. on, man. It's been a good. Uh, thank you for listening. Until now, people.